Yeah, ladies and gentlemen, good afternoon. It's a great feeling to be back to Hong Kong here again and definitely an honor to speak to you in this important forum today. So, thanks for having me here. Thanks for giving me the chance to give you, share with you one of some of my thoughts about the future of mobility, why we did Python, what the motivation behind it and where I think things will go. I'm ask, I, I've been asked frequently three questions. One is, does it really make sense to set up a new car, electric car company, the next electric car company? Second one is, why are you doing all those things in China? Uh, and the third one, why did you leave a great company like, like BMW, which I have been part for 20 years? So I will try to answer those questions in my presentation during the next 15 minutes or so. So first of all, does it make sense to create the next company selling electric cars? And the clear answer is no, this does not make sense because there are so many out already. All the big car makers will eventually be able to build uh, and sell electric cars. So there's no reason to do this. But the business model of selling cars, being them electric or not, is not the business model of the future. If you look to today's car companies, the, the, the greatest ones, they do a profit, an habit of 10 point whatever percent. And this will be less in the future due to regulations, uh, due to more competition, and due to the fact that the car eventually will become a kind of commodity. But there are new things coming up. There are technologies coming up like AI leading to autonomous driving. There is smart technology coming up, um, high-speed connectivity new style of user interfaces and this is what will make products different in the future and this is what will create opportunities for not only new products but new business models because looking at the car as a smart device you will be able to create sales channels to your customers you will be able to make business with them sell them digital content new functionalities based on data you generate with them and others and being autonomous and having the right product, you will be able to provide mobility at the end of the day and not sell cars. And this is where the real business is in the future. This requires to adapt a complete new business model. And this is the reason why we created Byton. And in this aspect, you can be much more flexible and much better and much faster to do so than a traditional company having the legacy of 100 years and more than 100,000 uh, people on board. So, in our case, it's not about refining cars, it's re about refining life. The whole Byton brand is centered around user experience and not so about, about the car. So, what does it mean if we talk about smart cars? And this is very important to understand. In the last 100 years, cars have been mainly a burden for societies, polluting the air, covering parking space, uh, causing traffic congestions and in the era of an autonomous car of a smart car this changes those products will add value not only to the customers of our brand they will add value to societies means providing sustainability clean energy make transportation and traffic safer reducing number of traffic accidents reducing number of deaths people from traffic accidents um, and uh, eventually lead to shared economy, to shared mobility, uh, like ride sharing or car sharing. This adds value to societies, and this is one of the reasons why those products and business models are not only driven by companies, they are driven and will be driven by societies. And if we now come back to the question, why do we do this in China? Uh, my feeling is that in China, more than in every other place in the world, it is understood that this will add value to societies. And that is not about only having products, that is about creating a whole ecosystem. This is about a connectivity network, this is about adapting the legal requirements and providing support and an, a space, an environment, a framework to make this happen. This is supported and this will drive um, uh, uh, those technologies and this business models further. Then second, uh, as you might know, in China everything is moving very fast you find uh, a lot of um, 
entrepreneurs, you find a lot of money of people who are prepared to invest in early stage companies and ideas. And last but not least, it's the biggest market in the world when it comes to transportation, and it will move and develop very fast and faster than other markets in the world. So we look at the car in a way that we think it is the next generation smart device. It is a car, it is still a car, and you still will need all the abilities to develop and manufacture a car. But from a customer experience and from a business perspective, it's more a smart device than a car. So how far away are we from this vision? What is reality today? I would like to show you a movie in this context. So what you saw in this movie is not science fiction or uh, just animation. It's reality today, and you will find this product in the market by end of next year. We built some full-runner prototypes where you can experience all this. We showed them uh, in, at the CES in Las Vegas uh, in January of this year. We've been to Europe. We showed them at Beijing Motor Show uh, some, some weeks before. And again, this is reality and will be in the market by end of next year. And it's the next step uh, when it comes to autonomous driving. This is the second model we showed at the CES in Shanghai some weeks before. And the special thing on this concept is this one is designed for level 4 autonomy. So it's not only a pretty car with some new, new uh, um, uh, user experience and nice design. It is designed for level 4 autonomy and it shows some integration of sensor technology. Because if you do level 4 driving, then you will have to deal with sensors, which are big and you have to take the, 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 the decision, are you going to hide them or do you want to use them as elements of design elements? And this car shows how this could look like. So what is Byton about? Uh, the, the brand is about enjoyable time. Again, not so much about the car part. And we want to, be we want to provide enjoyable time in social life, easy driving behavior and beyond the car. So we want to create an overall experience for our customers. For social life, if you look at our car not um, being a car, it's not a normal interior of a car, we call it a digital lounge experience. So you will find a lot of space, you will find a lot of variability, you can rotate the front seats, you have this big screen in front giving an experience for all of the, customer, uh, all of the uh, customers in the car and everyone has his own digital experience if you want. You find this big screen, you find a tablet in the middle of the steering wheel. This tablet in the middle of the steering wheel gives the driver full access to all the car functionalities if you, it comes to the air condition system, seat control and so on. 
And a very specific thing is you can switch this tablet to an Android tablet. Just do whatever you do with your smart devices. This you can do while standing still, while moving slow in a traffic jam, or while in autonomous mode. And uh, if you look to the streets of, uh, uh, of Beijing or Shanghai or Los Angeles today, then you will find uh, that most of the time the car is not moving, but standing still or moving slow. And everybody has the left hand on the steering wheel and the right hand his smart device and doing whatever kind of messaging. This time is over when you, when you, when you, when you use a Byton, you will just do, be able to do it at your fingertips. Then again, the impression of the digital lounge, even from the rear seat passengers, giving the fact that you can rotate the front seats, you will have the full view to the big screen, you will have a lot of space, uh, and you will have your own tablet for, a for your own digital experience, treating every passenger in the car the same. Now, when it comes to autonomous driving, um, uh, autonomous driving is a technology which is going to develop quite fast. There are different approaches from car companies, some of them saying we should do everything by our own. I would not agree to this approach. I think this technology is very complex and it will be, at the end of the day, very standard uh, in the industry due to legislation and due to the rec security requirements. And this is the reason why we choose partners to realize this. We are working with a great company in Silicon Valley in California. It's called Aurora, founded by the former head of Google's self-driving program, uh, Chris Ermsen. And we are partnering with Baidu in China to get the local application for China, which is obviously different from, from other parties. We will bring this level 4 technology to the market by end of 2020. Now, enjoyable time beyond the car, it's not only about the car, it's about a whole user journey, a whole customer experience. And uh, we are going... We are going to open our first brand store in the second half of this year in Shanghai. Our sales model will not be the standard one. We are not going with 4S dealerships. We are going to implement a direct sales model. But obviously, you have to build a brand and you have to create an experience for your customers. And these are the brand, shows, uh, the, the brand stores you will see all over the world. The first one being in Shanghai. And our basic philosophy in this customer journey is each minute, each step, which means for each minute and each step our customer is doing with on our brand store, whenever he approaches our brand, he will have a very speci special experience. And we are using a lot of no technologies to provide this, facial recognition lock-in, there are augmented reality tools, uh, virtual reali reality to show the products, you will have simulator experience and, and video conference. So how are we going to implement all this? What is the structure of Python? First of all, to do though, in a short period of time, you need a global approach. You have to go where the talents and the technology is right now. And in our case, this means a premium product needs premium design, a premium car concept. This is the reason why we have our design and vehicle center in Munich, in Germany, close to those uh, uh, premium OEMs of today, like Mercedes, BMW, and Audi. Our R&D center is in Silicon Valley and Santa Clara, providing the technologies for autonomous driving, for con connectivity, for, for UI, UX. And our global headquarters is in China. We are a company rooted in China in Nanjing, where we do the local R&D, where we do supply chain, and where we are on the way on building our plant. Because having a great product is not enough. You have to be able to manufacture it in volume and quality, and at the right price point. And this is what our plant is here. Uh, it is designed for 200, 300,000 units a year. It's under construction now and will go to, the, to production by end of next year. We finished the first part of the plant, which is a trial shop to build prototypes. And I think we have a video here showing what's currently going on.
So talking about our products, uh, the first product will be an SUV. This is the one you saw in those videos and you, will you, you found in all those exhibitions we have been doing the last year. It will be a deep premium segment SUV, around 300,000 RMB, because our philosophy is if we want to change the world, we want to have market penetration, we have to make our products affordable. The second one will be a premium sedan. Showed you the picture of the concept car with full autonomous driving in 21. And then we are thinking about a seven-seater, very nice imp implementation of an MPV uh, seven-seater car uh, in the uh, range of 2022. We think that uh, Byton became a new benchmark for this automotive startup because to be successful, eventually you need four factors. You need the product without any doubt. You need technology competence. You need money. And you have to be able to industrialize and build your products. And this is what Byton achieved. And again, we are going to go step into new business models, looking to the product as a smart device, selling our customers digital, function and di digital functions and content, and eventually became a supplier or an, 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 a provider of shared mobility in the era of shared economy. So now, let me come back to the last question. Why did I leave a great company like BMW? I think we are really facing fascinating times here. Uh, the whole industry is going to change. There are fascinating ideas and uh, opportunities for more products, for new products, for new business models. I'm very passionate about this, and I'm proud and passionate to be part of it. So this is the reason why I finally decided to set up Byton. And uh, again, by end of next year, you will be able, if you want, to experience those products. Thank you very much. Thank you.